is, man. It's your boy Gio, man. I'm back with another one, man. This right here is the update on the little dirt case, man. Um, it's a lot of information that's going on, man. They're saying that, you know, uh, if the guys don't testify, it's possible that he could walk away from this. And then also, y'all should know that, uh, if not already, that uh, Lil Tim with the King Von case, that's been dismissed. That's dropped. That's done. Um, so that's something that he don't have to worry about. But also, they're saying that, you know, uh, Wack 100 is getting on Brick Baby, man. they saying that he can't be doing all that game banging stuff and this and that, man. They said he was part of the reason why Lil Dirt is in what he's into when they ran into his house. They got his phone and some other things that they confiscated, man, that they're using as evidence, man. And uh, it's time back to Brick Baby, man. They're saying allegedly that's what this is. And Big U, they sent the set up where they dropped the location where he was at the gas station, man. They said they saw Quando Rondo hopping out, you know, and that's when they took action, man. Um, also, they saying that uh, Icebox is talking as well. The big jewelry store that everybody go to, man. That's where King Von went and got those old block chains from. Once the deed was done for Duck, man. And uh, they said that they talking about it, man. They got a lot of information. I'm pretty sure they know a nice bit of things, man. But anyway, they said that they talking, man. So this is not a good look for him, man. And by uh, him being Muslim, like his dad said, he don't talk, man. He did his time. And uh, he's expecting Dirk to be able to do his time and not talk as well, man. So, you know, this whole situation here is a bit of a cluster, man. Uh, it's a big trending thing, man, about your boy Dirk being in there, man. And, you know, him setting up them three flights, man. He was trying to trick the feds so he can get away, man. And that's not looking good as well on his case. And Mama Duck pursuing, you know, the states of him and King Von and as well as the lawsuits that she have against them. I think it's like three different lawsuits or something like that. She got against them, him, his estate and the record label. So it will be three each, you know, that's not looking good, man. And, you know, they were talking about how Dirk had something to do with duck and cash on the live and, and the guy that had the wiretap. They unalived his girlfriend, unallegedly. I'm going to say allegedly now, but, um, yeah, man, this is this is crazy, man. And then, you know, Icebox putting in their two cents, man, is not going to help it no better, man. You know, they saying this is going down like a young thug YSL trial case, man, type of ordeal, man. So, your boy Dirk, man, he going to have to put his money where his mouth is, man, and, and really, really get the lawyers that he need to have, man, and hope and pray that these guys do not testify against him. From what they're saying, they're saying that those guys don't even have a lawyer. So, if they don't have a lawyer, they're letting you know that they going to talk. Dirk's not about to pay them guys from a lawyer because then it's going to look even more obvious. So that's just to let you know what type of time this is on. I think those guys are going to be talking. They don't have no lawyers. Dirt's not going to support them. Man, it's going to be crazy. Like, it's going to be a lot of talking. And that's what's going to entail uh, Rico. You know, that's what's going to help this Rico get started, man, which is not a good look, man, because it's connected with a lot of people, man. A lot of artists is connected to Dirt, man. You know, um... It's a sad situation, man, that, that's going on right now, man. And, uh, you know, they got him on his birthday, man, unfortunately, man. You know, um, y'all check this out, man. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man, on this new information. Uh, I'm not going to spill it all. I don't want to spill all the tea uh, so that way y'all won't watch the video. <laughs> but uh, check this out. Let me know what y'all think, man. Get back at me, man. Let's check in the comments on this. Maybe there's something we could do a live on as well, man. Um, hit that subscribe button, man. Run me up, man. I appreciate it, man. All the love, man, that y'all be giving me all the time, man. It's nothing but love back, man. We all family now, man. So that's how we're going to keep rolling this, man. We're going to run it up like that, man, moving forward. And uh, to the next one, man, y'all stay safe, stay warm, stay blessed, stay happy, man. Stay loving each other, man. And I'm going to catch y'all on the next one, man. I'm out, family. This is just advice. If you ever get jammed up, this you do. What happened?
Call my lawyer. That's it. I don't, I'm not finna tell you this is how it happened. It, it was me and him in the car. It ain't mine. All that goofy shit. That's snitching. That's dry snitching. That's snitching. Stop giving his address to Stop giving his address to you. Calm down, bro. Oh, uh, chill out. Trying to figure out why I'm still running content on a conversation that got leaked from this and keep on trying to keep on digging shit up out my boy. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Dead homies. I don't talk about nothing else. Sick so. Energy is what it, energy is. Hey, this break. is my boy right here. Hold on, no, three days in a row. Gang. You been here three days in a row getting asked the same question after we talk. I still ain't watched it. I don't know what I said to cuz. I was hiding. That ain't no excuse. I know one thing. The first time I asked you, first time I picked up the phone, I said, bro, I could remember one thing only that was derogatory that I said. Did I or did I not? Speak on it. On 6 so Crip. Everybody else, like, it's cool. Like, all this. It was a Monday show. It was a show yesterday. I love you, Adam. I'm not tripping off of you. It, it ain't nothing like that because you're frustrated right now, bro. Because y'all digging it. If a nigga say he ain't going to watch it, and he ain't going to watch it. And the who leak it is fucking whatever. And any that ride with cuz on the dead homies, it is what it is. On 6 so Crip. And me and cuz are crashing together or by myself on the dead homies. Wherever you just want to meet, I don't fuck about no HK Turtle. I'm, I'm going to give you your shout out today, cuz. On the dead homies, on six o crib, cause you a cop, you the police, you reach it, you want, you doing interviews with Alex Alonzo, this, that, and that, trying to get your shit off the ground. On the dead homies, you got the address to right here, right now, like y'all pulled up the last time. Pull up on the dead homies, pull up on six o, cause ain't no forties coming to the sixty, pushing no issues. A rolling sixty, ain't near forty coming to the sixty with no type of drama. Nigga. On SC, only 40 come through that motherfucker is people. Because just like the evidence they had on Shorty, then they had on Dirk too. That you just paid to get your fucking brother killed. How you not in jail? We ain't talking about this shit. This shit just ain't happening in our face, huh? <laughs> Guess what, bitch? Bugs Bunny back again. The rapper got the gun, and I know what I'm doing with this bitch, bro. While y'all, I, I quit. Now, seriously, though, this is a real fact, though. Really think about this. Who the fuck you know? Name get brought up, and what? What actually proving facts that you didn't pay me some money to go kill a motherfucker, and I and I'd have killed the wrong motherfucker too. You didn't pay me to kill. I'd have killed the wrong motherfucker for me to turn around and go kill a right motherfucker though. But you. The police know I the police know I work I work for you. Cause they say Shorty flat out told they ass like man. She look Dirk told me to do that shit. And he paid me to do it. Right? Showing receipts. Like this nigga gave me real money to get this man gone. A lot of money. Right? Why is this man not in jail, gang? This This shit just happened what? Three months ago? What Shorty said? They always tell you, be a real nigga, keep it real, do this. He did all of that, and, and, and people still snake them. Uh, you know, you can tell people yes a thousand times. The moment you tell them no, it's every man for themselves now. And that's exactly what happened. The streets is a myth. There is no such thing as street code. There is, all of that is a scam. All the real gangsters I know to this, and right now, be by themselves every day. Mm. Right. When the feds get on to you, they send you a target letter and they let you know you're being investigated and that the prosecutor can indict you at any moment. People don't know this, but that's a fact. Uh, and if there's a threat against your life and they know about it, by law, the FBI have to come and inform you that there's a threat against your life. You feel me? Uh, that's happened to me before. So, uh, it's an unfortunate situation, but, you know, me being in the line of work that I'm in, uh, celebrities always go through a process to get out in front of a situation. So when I seen uh, him converting to Muslim uh, Islam, um, I seen him denouncing all street ties, and I seen him getting keys to the city, making donations, um, when I seen him getting his criminal background wiped and stuff like that, 
in my mind, I'm like, oh, something's happening behind the scenes, and he's trying to clean up stuff the best way he can. And, you know, after seeing these events, I'm not surprised, though. It's like, it's really, like, not much loyalty in the streets. You feel me? Uh, you know, they always tell you, be a real nigga, keep it real, do this. He did all of that, and, and, and people still snake them. Uh, you know, you can tell people a yes a thousand times. The moment you tell them no, it's every man for themselves now. And that's exactly what happened. So, you know, uh, with the guy OTF Jam, you know, in Chicago, they have something called uh, armed habitual criminal. You feel me? So if you get caught with a gun too many times, then you get hit with armed habitual criminal. You feel me? Like everybody who I know got that, you know, got mandatory 14 years. You feel me? So Jam had just did 12. He came home. He get caught with a gun again. Uh, apparently, people didn't slide when his baby mama got killed. Guys, guys get mad about that. He called Dirk for a lawyer. He said, Dirk, stop answering his calls. But if you Dirk and you want paperwork paying for this guy's lawyer, then you feel me? That's how Rico's happen. So, you know, I feel like he took the proper measures to prevent this. Guys didn't follow the instructions. Look at the YSL case. Uh, the rental car allegedly that was used to do the murder on the guy Big Nut was associated with the YSL label. The OTF credit card was used to book flights and rental cars for this alleged situation. Same, same shit, same thing. Same exact thing. I'm not surprised though. Like, in Chicago, bro, it's murder over money. That's why our city is the way it is. It should come up with the guy OTF Jam. So Jam had just did 12, he came home, he get caught with a gun again. Uh, apparently, people didn't slide when his baby mama got killed. Guys, guys get mad about that. He called Dirk for a lawyer. He said, Dirk, stop answering his calls. But if you Dirk and you want paperwork paid for this guy's lawyer, then you feel me? That's how Rico's happen. So, you know, I feel like he took the proper measures to prevent this. Guys didn't follow the instructions. Look at the YSL case. Uh, the rental car allegedly that was used to do the murder on the guy Big Nut was associated with the YSL label. The OTF credit card was used to book flights and rental cars for this alleged situation. Same, same shit, same thing. Same exact thing. I'm not surprised though. Like, in Chicago, bro, it's murder over money. That's why our city is the way it is. In Chicago, if you blow the horn at somebody in traffic, you better be prepared to shoot it out. That's just how it is. Yo, looks like OTF Jam have responded trying to clear his names on the snitch allegations, man. Y'all listen to this. Jam had a message, and he got a message for everybody, man. And he's saying he's suing once all this over with for defamation of character, man. For everybody got it, they name, his name in their titles. He says it's a lot of people that's out there, Scud, that need to be reported about. And I ain't one of them. He said, why would he tell on Lil Dirk? They saying that he told on Lil Dirk because he was locked up. And they think that he was mad at Lil Dirk for not bonding him out and sending him a lawyer. So everybody putting it together as if he told. Jam say, man, he been in the streets longer than any one of us, man. And he said he ain't got nothing to talk to 12 about. No conversation. But OTF members, they saying that he told. I seen Bezu post it. I seen other people post it. But he saying that he didn't tell. He saying that he's an official member. And they did an interview on top of the fucking murder cop. You stupid All I know, don't say that shit about Troy. Or rest in peace. Duh. <laughs> Thanks, Boss Top, for opening your big ass mouth. What about the picture that went viral with Muwap wearing the duck sneakers? That's clown shit. If with the same drinker you y'all use. Five alleged gang members are now charged with the murder of Chicago rapper FBG Duck. And Duck, the fear that she's with, she hit two of them. Muwap bullet. Damn. Hit Skitches neck right. Damn. Was in the wall. Damn bullet. Hit his head, he dropped his blick. I'm Buttershot. I'm Buttershot. Shut the fuck up, you saying Now that. picture me sitting on top of a fucking car that I just shut killed the OD up. on. I got Jay Main them in this shut bitch. The fuck up, I got four of them in this bitch. They in this bitch. They killed the nigga. I just got some attention. I think the fans ain't coming to get these stupid bastards.
you know, you got a little dirt, just got bumped, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when that first came across your desk, what was your thoughts on that? It was like, damn, like, you know what I mean? Because it seemed, he was changing his life too. It seemed like he was on the path that you was on. You get what I'm saying? There was a lot of shit on my desk that day. Mm. But when that shit came across my desk, that shit was like, damn, that shit fucked up. Because it's like, you know, be taking care of families and you know if he gone he got people working for him so you know this motherfuckers without jobs yeah. it's starting to hit different around his bed so my daughter on phone her mom damn on my baby and then folks just uh, alley hoop me huh, put me on stage on phone them then tell me go in the back you can interview whoever you want to i got all my celebrity homies out here man this. that's so fire bro that's some gangster shit Ooh, i say that's why you whooping like that that's a real Man, yeah. it hit different, man. We can't change what happened in the past, but we can do better in our futures, bro. Yeah. Like, if you really push in peace, you have to turn your hate into love. You have to learn to forgive, is what I'm trying to say. I don't fear nothing. Chill, if it is what it is, like, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I got a brain. I know not, I know how to move, and I know what not to say. You know what I'm saying? If you go in there trying to betray something, man, Cause he did this and did trust this building case. So somebody from an OTF jam pays. They, you know, making little fake threats to me or whatever. Mad cause he in there telling. They tagged me a couple times and then keep deleting. And I sent a question mark. My boy keep jam name out your mouth. You peon internet. I told him. You in that rat, have the same energy. He on his page. I guess this is manager. Casey J Hester, AKA OTF Jam, is my artist's real name. Until you see that name on paperwork, don't at me. Free the family, time will tell. At the end of the day, this is who the people said telling. Don't inbox me talking crazy, management, OTF Jam, whoever you is. You know what I'm saying? There's a million people saying that you are the rat. This is the definition of a real rat. A rat. Wearing wires. Where's this coming from? They got indictments. So y'all trying to make posters and act like this ain't OTF Jam. OTF Jam ain't did that. Then who is it, man? OTF Jam, obviously the one. And it probably not be the only one. It probably be a lot of rats, a lot of moles in y'all circle, man. Y'all even took the trophy down. You mad at me? Inboxing me? Making posters? Inbox talk? What? Tomorrow I'll be out of penitentiary five fucking years. I've never been out of penitentiary a year since I was 11. I spent five years in the juvenile system, 20 years in the penitentiary. I'm 42 years old. I spent most of my time on this planet in a cell. I can name 20, 30 niggas. My homies is dead. I'm here though. I forgave my brother's killer. And I'm saying it to say this. Nick that killed my brother. My, my brother died in my grandma's arms. In that fucking house that we grew up in. Nigga shot my brother. He ran to the He ran to the house. He died in Nanny Hall when she opened the door. So I'm telling you this some real shit, man. If, if I ain't let that shit go, I won't be right here today. I won't be here for my niece and my nephews. Man, Gil won't be doing this. Y'all won't know me. I won't be able to get y'all this game. But I had to leave. I had to let that shit go. I tell you one thing. Now I'm out here taking care of his daughter. Man, for her to go to school, taking care of my nephew. Take care of my mom and my grandmama. Because I forgave my brother killer. But you know, I understand. I understand what y'all going through. But I love all you young niggas in here. And I mean that shit. I love you niggas, man. And I, and I hope y'all make it out. I hope y'all make it the fuck out, man. Man, he like... Straight it's up, so, man. It's so crazy. Yeah, this motherfucker really dropping tears for this shit. Like, shit for real, like... And the indictment says that six people total, they traveled in two cars to the hotel in downtown LA where Bowman was supposedly staying. They allegedly started following Bowman, who was in a black Escalade with his cousin, Savaya Robinson, known as SR. The indictment includes photos from a traffic camera showing the white infinity the suspects were in seemingly following the black SUV. And the indictment says that the suspects then followed the Escalade to a Beverly Hills gas station, parked in an alley, and the filing includes surveillance photos of what prosecutors say are the suspects appearing to fire guns towards the gas pumps. And you can see it's daylight in these photos at a gas station in the middle of Beverly Hills. So Bradford, whoever was responsible for this, what a blatant crime, what a blatant act in, in the middle of it. But talk to me how strong you think this case is based on what I've been saying. If we're trying to prove, if the prosecutors are trying to prove conspiracy, what do you make of some of this evidence? Text messages, surveillance, travel receipts, what do you make of it? I, I think that Dirk will have still have a defense. I think that, you know, I don't know everything that's going on. Obviously, no one does. 
Uh, from what I'm reading in the indictment, I think there's some there's some missing pieces there when it comes to Dirk about how involved he was in this alleged conspiracy. The other guys, where they all have plane tickets, they all got a car, they, you know, uh, they're on tape. Th that's going to be a very difficult case for those lawyers who have that um, who have that case because, you know, and I've said this multiple, multiple times on multiple cases. There are so many ways these days to catch individuals in this type of crime where you have cell phone records, GPS data, you're going to have um, cross-reference on the phones, what phones are together at what times, you're going to have car rental agreements, you're going to have videotapes. Um, you know, it's real funny because very often you find these, these red light cameras and things like that that the feds get on state cases where I want the footage, where I know it's good for my client, they're like, sorry, we don't save that footage. <laughs> but somehow the feds get, you know, camera footage from red light cameras, camera footage from the next door neighbor, uh, camera footage from some guy who's just randomly on the street. So you'll see that they will put together a, uh, a forensic case against the, the actual shooters that you know, will be very heavily based on cell phone records, GPS data, and videotapes. Now, when it comes to um, Dirk Banks, you know, so far I've seen one text that says, don't have them associate my name with any kind of flights that they're taking. Certainly that's not a good text, but is that the only text? Because that doesn't, you know, that in itself doesn't stand on its own. Certainly it's circumstantial. Uh, but like I said, there's, we have to wait and see what other evidence they have. If they have a snitch, if they have videotapes or, or audio tapes of him saying something, I think that's a lot different uh, than, hey, just make sure you don't associate my name with these guys. Because it could be, he could be blaming, you know, Grant or one of these other guys and saying like, hey, these guys are going to do some crazy stuff. And he's like, yeah. hey, listen, make sure it doesn't associate with me yeah. at all. You, you can look at that a million different ways. So I'm, I'm, hesitant to say that they have you know a slam dunk case on on dirk banks I, I think that they have a long way to go on dirk banks in order to prove the conspiracy against him i think the others i think it's going to be uh it's going to be very heavily based on paperwork so in other words i mean look i, I said it before what a blatant attack you're shooting in yeah. the middle of the day near gas pumps which could explode if you make the argument that the case against the shooters is really strong could there be a, a situation where they work out an attractive plea deal? I don't know what an attractive plea deal would look like for them, considering what they're facing and what the accusations are, where they turn on Lil Dirk. I mean, what would be a scenario that would look that what kind of deal could be worked out where if where you're working a deal out with the alleged shooters to go after the principal? Of this case or the alleged so principle it, it's happened quite often in the past and if you told me you know the deal that sammy the bull worked out right the guy killed like 19 or 20 people and he ended up getting i don't know a year or two in jail followed by probation if you told me that was a deal that someone would get for you know being associated with 19 or 20 murders i would tell you that's an, an impossible right. deal to get so it all depends on the hunger of the u.s attorney and the AUSA that's involved and if they want this individual badly enough, they'll make very attractive deals for these individuals. What, a, what does a very attractive deal look like? I think they go for the lowest hanging fruit. Uh, whoever, you know, didn't actually kill the guy, you know, maybe someone that was involved that didn't, didn't actually shoot or someone that shot, but it didn't hit, you know, they, they're going to have forensics. Yeah. So they'll take whoever is the least culpable and I think that they'll approach him and make a deal with him um, which, that'll be the most attractive. And if that guy doesn't make a deal, they'll move on to the next guy. So usually that's what happens, right? You go for the lowest hanging fruit right. first, the guy that you think will flip, the guy that didn't really have that much involvement. And I think what also is interesting with the indictment is it wasn't just money. They're like, oh, it could have been money or it could have been career advancement, right. which is it's strange to mention that because – they don't really go into any kind of facts about it. They just say it could have been, you know, that they would have advanced in their career. But what does that look like? Dirk promised them like a record deal. Like, does or, or they assumed it? 
And if they assumed it, that's a weaker case for the prosecution. If it was just like, Correct. oh, I assumed if I did this for him, you Correct. know. Um, that's, so, you got it. That's the key, right? They're like, right. hey, I knew if I helped him out, he would he would give me a record deal. This is just advice. If you ever get jammed up, this you do. What happened? Call my lawyer. That's it. I don't, I'm not going to tell you this is how it happened. It, it was me and him in the car. It ain't mine. All that goofy shit. That's snitching. That's dry snitching. That's snitching. Yo, man, I keep telling y'all. Y'all got to know when your homeboys are getting caught with cases as best you can. It's kind of why I like what the exposures be doing. Because they be exposing niggas and trying to tell y'all who catching cases. So when one of your homeboys and your friends got a case, a gun case, a dope case, and all that, and they don't tell you about it, stay away from that nigga, please, y'all. Please. When after you did something and you got away with it, and a nigga come and bring up a subject to you, hey, you remember when we did X, Y, and D? Scooby Dooby Doo on him, like, oh, oh, oh. do the please do that, y'all. Do the Scooby Dooby Doo. Because you never know what's going on in somebody's life. Nobody wants to do time. All these niggas on social media brag about, I'll never snitch, I'll never. Man, I told y'all, it ain't a story I can't tell on not one nigga that y'all ever hear me talking about from Compton. And that's just Compton niggas. I can't tell y'all one nigga that I can't really tell y'all story about. But my point is, and my only point is, once you get away with something, y'all, don't let nobody come talking to you about it no more. Like, dog, why are we talking about this? Well, well, well I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll call you later. I, I, I'll get at you later, homie. Hey, I know. I'm a derby cop, a pig or whatever. I'm just trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to educate some of y'all. What's happening is they're going to slide both them murders. Um and probably hit him with some kind of racketeer. And I truly believe that very soon you're going to see FBG Duck's murder involved in this as well because if I remember right, they were alluding to his name being in the paperwork as well as King Vaughn. Um, Dirk is facing the death penalty is what they're saying. It's interesting because out of self-interest, again, I'm going to repeat this. Out of self-interest, these record labels are going to have to insert themselves at some point. The bigger labels. Or they're going to pull all funding. And it may be the end of record labels and rap as we know it. Because if they get enough of these rappers going to jail and getting hit with Ricos and freak-offs and all of that, it can kind of convolute exactly what is music and who's right, who's wrong. Because... When you even look at dirt, let's just say that they say, yo, here's a murder for hire. This dude was worth 30 million, 40 million dollars. Well, he didn't make the 40 million off the street. He made the 40 million legitimate through a business where his business is through this business that gets a piece of all the money that he makes. Now, here's where I think things get interesting, because if I'm being honest, you make him make a case that Dirk was set up by his homeboy. If what I'm reading is correct, Dirk specifically sent the message and told these people, do not book no flights with my name, but yet you still use the card to book the flights. Yeah, I may never told you about the murder, but you know two plus two is four. We probably talked to the same people. You probably knew that I knew that Quando was out there, and then you probably know I'm sending the smackers out there. You know who the smackers is. If I say, yo, get such and such and such and such a ticket out to L.A. And don't put it in my name. You might know what that mean. Right? So it could have been a setup because there's no way you can tell me that people that's been involved in that level of that serious of a habitat and atmosphere in Chicago. A father that's been locked up 20 some odd years and they don't know that you can't use the car to book the flights to go and commit a murder 
this seems almost like you serve Dirk up on a platter. Because it's either that or even with Dirk, I was telling him, like I, when I, I had him, he was in New York. We we did uh, the uh, power thing. Oh, mm-hmm. That's the first and last acting role at this yeah. point, yeah, right but, now. But we did the the uh, not that the acting role when we was doing the theme song for Force, mm-hmm. got you, or the Chicago version. Yeah. Then, like I was like, yo, that, this is this is them. I did some real shit, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I said, yo, just watch him. The his crew, because he said that you know what I'm saying, and, and it's like. I, like I've always had that energy myself in the middle of everything that was going on. I'm not just watching. We know fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Another shot. I'm always watching. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where was you at Thursday? At <laughs> you got pulled over, you, and you're not in jail. Why are you not in jail? <laughs> Brick will never return back to gangbang life. Where he is as a man and a father and a husband, he don't want to go there. If you're mid late thirties. It would be a pretty big step back to be like, you know and, what, I'm fully. And he has back done a shit, few you know? things and been exposed about a few things that it wouldn't be wise and smart and safe for him to just go back to that 100 percent completely. <clears throat> Get your circle of comrades that love you and you love them and y'all rock out. But he needs to just like he got to reprogram his mind because that is going to get louder and louder as this case gets bigger and bigger. Mm. But honestly, that clip is not him really like revealing any kind of insider information just to have his back on this. He's not really saying anything beyond what realistically a lot of 16 year old white kids were probably saying on Twitter and Instagram that day as well. 16 year old white kids aren't bona fide certified Mm. gang members in the streets of Los Angeles that's tied to the actual group that you are talking about. A 16-year-old white kid is just like, oh, I bet it might have been this. You got brick, photos, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. This dude really from his neighborhood in a different state, and he like, they can't say they didn't slot as if he knows that that's what that was about. When you said that to Dirk, what, did, what was his response to you? He said, you know what? He said, somebody just came in my house. How do they know exactly what the address is? I don't know my address. Nobody like this. It's like a... Something happened. The in robbery that, in Georgia. Yeah. When his um, when India had to he shoot. He went straight to talking about that. Mm-hmm. Damn. Damn. Lil Durk allegedly has something to do with the passing of FBG Duck and this guy right here, FBG Cash. Take a listen to what he says. Him and Dirk had beef about. Um, okay, I got some fucking questions here. Let me let me dip in the phone real quick. Oh yeah, so why'd you take that picture with the King Von mural? Dirk told me to. What? <laughs> How did he tell you to? He threw text. Now he blocked me now, but yeah, through text. What? What? what did, you want to show me your conversation with him? Nah, he blocked <laughs> me. He blocked me. My fucking. I'm the the conversation's text. still there, yeah. right? Nah. You delete text? Yeah, like when I only see I. I ain't big on confrontation sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, most times I ain't big on confrontation, so when I go to my mom, and man, that was just tasteful, man. Like, what was the, that we was talking what like kind of that, conversation like, were you having before he told you to go take this photo? Fuck me, fuck him. Go go over there and do that and see what happened to you. I'm like, I'm outside right now. You hit him up? Yeah. Yeah. And he he was just and like, he hey, what's up? How, why, why? Yeah. The, Chicago's so weird because the ops always be talking to each other and like going on live and tweeting at each other and shit. <laughs> Wait, Dirk told him to go there and see what happens? That's what he said. He said, Dirk said, go over there and take a picture and see what happened to you. Now, what happened to him was he was with a female in a car at night on 81st and Ashland, south side of Chicago. He just got in town from being in Houston with mob ties. He was supposed to sign with mob ties. Now, look, when he was with that female, they pulled up on him. Now, listen to what Dirk and his guys got to say. And keep in mind, when Cash was found, he was by a tree. Popped up. Now, listen to Dirk. 
Yeah, you mean, ain't had your gun for them. You better have your gun for me. <laughs> better have your gun for Booney. Better have your gun for C. You don't believe me, you gonna see. You gonna end up by that tree. <laughs> <laughs> know that we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got my gun for Bona. Oh, they no. call him Chief. No, we should have killed him soon, because uh, he a thief. Oh, I told Disky mom won't eat meat. She made me collard greens. She like, Schmirk, you know it's July, right? Why you dressed like it's Halloween? <laughs> I say, go, go. They know that we did it. They know that we did it. They keep on saying it in that video. They know that we did it. And he said they're going to find you by that tree. You can't make this stuff up, man. We'll see if he go to trial if they bring this situation up. Inside the Mafia. I'm out something for the history books and his dramatic arrest will see him remembered for a long time because he tried to make a run for it according to the feds the chicago rapper had tried throwing off the authorities with the oldest trick in the book but was later arrested just before he could pull it off man this little dirk saga keeps getting wild and you'll definitely need to sit down for this one lil dirk arrested trying to flee the country when news broke out that Chicago rapper Lil Durk had been arrested, no one was prepared for the actual details of the arrest because they are wild. As it turns out, the feds have been keeping tabs on him for a long time. The FBI had even infiltrated his gang and knew his every move. It was during this period of heightened surveillance that the FBI learned of Lil Durk's attempts to leave the country. According to the indictment, U.S. Customs and Border Protection alerted the FBI when Durk booked two one-way flights to Dubai and Switzerland on October 24th. These bookings raised immediate red flags. As they suggested an attempt to evade the legal consequences of the unfolding indictment. While Lil Durk did not board the flights to Dubai or Switzerland, the situation took a more dramatic turn when the FBI discovered that he had also arranged for a private plane to depart Miami and arrive in Italy. This revelation added a new layer of urgency to the investigation, prompting law enforcement to act swiftly. The timing of these bookings, coupled with the serious charges facing his associates, painted a picture of a man on the run seeking refuge from the storm of legal troubles closing in on him. On the evening of Thursday, October 24th, FBI agents moved in to arrest Lil Durk at the Miami area airport. The arrest took place around 8 p.m., just an hour before his scheduled departure to Italy. The swift action by law enforcement ensured that Lil Durk would not evade justice, as he was transported to Broward County Jail, pending a conspiracy murder for hire charge. Durkio's arrest story is wild, but what's even more crazy is what led to his arrest. And let's just say the rapper was moving different and reckless, because he wasn't the only one who was arrested. The story begins with the tragic death of Chicago rapper. King Von in 2020, a close associate of Lil Durk. King Von's death sent shockwaves through the music industry and sparked a series of events that would eventually lead to the arrest of several OTF members. The federal indictment reveals that five individuals associated with OTF, Kavon London Grant, DeAndre Dontrell Wilson, Keith Jones, David Brian Lindsay, and Asa Houston, were charged in Los Angeles with plotting to kill rapper Quando Rondo. This plot is believed to be a retaliatory act linked to the circumstances surrounding King Von's death. As law enforcement intensified their investigation into the activities of OTF, they uncovered a web of connections and communications that suggested a coordinated effort to target Quando Rondo. The indictment details how these individuals allegedly conspired to carry out the murder-for-hire plot, which ultimately led to their arrests. Court documents allege that the five men used OTF-affiliated credit cards to book flights and rental cars to the scene of the shooting, and now they are faced with grave charges, including murder-for-hire involving a death and the use of a machine gun in a violent crime. What's crazy is that Dirk might be in cuffs because one of his mans told on him. The indictment details how a dude named OTF Jam, a trusted member of the crew, played a crucial role in the investigation. Jam, who had been released from prison in 2022 after serving 12 years for attempted murder, was identified as an informant who had been cooperating with authorities for years. His decision to wear a wire and provide information to law enforcement was a betrayal that no one saw coming, especially Lil Dirk. According to the indictment, Jam recordings and the information he provided were key in linking Dirk to the murder-for-hire plot. The plot itself was a meticulously planned operation, with OTF members allegedly discussing payments and logistics. On the day of the alleged attempt on Bowman's life, OTF-related credit cards were reportedly used to book flights for those involved in the hit to return to Chicago. These transactions, combined with Jam's recordings, formed the backbone of the case against Dirk. Jam, a longtime member of OTF,
OTF was considered a brother by Lil Durk. During Jam's 12-year incarceration for attempted murder, Durk stood by him, providing financial support and ensuring that Jam's needs were met. This included covering legal fees, purchasing a house and car, and gifting him more than $50,000 in cash. Can you gave you 50, bro. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Fact. Bro, made it's sure like he made a way for me to be straight like Wack 100 gives Lil Dirk advice. A lot of the street dudes gonna hate me for it. Hey, bro, you hustle on the block to get off the block. You cannot take the block with you. You cannot name your company or your corporation after your block or your set because now they're saying you guys are smart enough to have corporations and then you think you're camouflaging and hiding under behind them but now we're saying your corporations are criminal empires yes you got legal contracts but then using the legal money to have illegal things done you get what i'm saying so we got to get a little smarter um look they got the same charges the same exact charges Larry Hoover got. That is crazy. That is crazy. Oh, uh, they're trying to make Dirk like a Larry Hoover. <laughs> What's going on, man? Like for real. But to be honest with y'all, y'all pee pad go, man. They let Dirk sit around on these streets, being negative, dissing niggas, and da 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 da. They let you do that. They let you do that. They let you think that this is what's what you doing. Well, I ain't gonna say let you think. They let you do the devil work, right? They want you to do the devil work to keep people dead in the communities, to keep letting people die in the communities, right? But have y'all noticed this the same way they did uh, Jeff Ford and a lot of other people? When they seen that man pushing peace, unity, or whatever he was doing, um, becoming a Muslim, switching, switching up the narrative, all of a sudden these people come for you. Murder will hire. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You've exceeded our expectations. That's so. right. No, you're, you're dealing with this as a... Professionals. Yeah, you're dealing with... <laughs> it may not act like it in the chat. Professionals. So, um... Uh, there it is. She got QR codes. Yeah. She got QR codes. Oh, Alex, that is so yeah, funny. Yeah, Wait, that's so that's like the little Vegas shit back in the day. Right, right, right. right, right. right. Vegas and they just all over the floor with numbers Damn. and shit to call. That's that new shit. Wait, they got charged by the feds? Nothing like it pops up. Let's go real quick. Hey, good work. Um, They got charged by the feds? Hey, Omani, you're the man, bro. I really Thank appreciate you, meeting you. I really appreciate meeting you. Thank you.